How do you spot a scammer? Scammers are finding new and creative ways to take advantage of their victims. They pressure and deceive people with fear and promises and use data to personalize attacks. So here are some tips on how to tell if someone is coming you online. Number 1 Making Promises If something sounds too good to be true, it probably is. Whenever someone is trying to rush you into a decision, by making grand promises in exchange for your information, it's a good time to take a step back and evaluate their credentials. Scammers are known for get-rich-quick plays. If someone has a legitimate service or product to offer you, you don't need to dress it up with promises that sound miraculous. Number 2 Unexpected Contact While we like to think of our personal email accounts as being private, The truth is that it is very easy for scammers to collect massive lists of email addresses. When we are contacted on our private accounts, it is easy to assume the person on the other end well-meaning as long as the text is friendly and personal. However, you should be cautious of any unexpected contact. No matter how innocent the initial message may seem, Scammers look to build trust first and then take advantage of their target. Number 3 Asking for wire transfer As a good rule of thumb, you should never wire money to someone you haven't known for a long time. Wire transfers are convenient. 
they avoid dealing with third parties who charge transaction fees. But this convenience is what makes funds so hard to recover after a scam. Fraudsters do not have to verify their identity if they are not working through highly secure companies like PayPal. So there is often no way to identify or locate them. Number 4 Posing as authority figure Scammers will pose as authority figures to take advantage of law-abiding people. They can use location data to find information about local authorities in your area and use it against Victims have even cited examples of scammers creating email accounts in the name of local police figures and imitating them. Any government body or financial institution with authority will have an office and a phone number. Contact them directly to discuss urgent matters. Number 5 Claiming to be victims Disasters happen. In times of crisis, many of us want to help. But any stranger contacting you directly and claiming to be a victim in need of support is likely attempting to scam you. Relief organizations and crowdfunding platforms are much more secure and transparent for making donations to those in need. Don't let a scammer take advantage of your good intentions. Number 6 to act fast to take advantage of an offer. Scammers will often play on your emotion. If you don't do something now, you'll miss out. Sometimes they're legit, but you have to take time to question it. Explain that you will call them back if you have decided. If they say no, and you have to decide now, it's a scam. Number 7 The letter or email you have received is full of dodgy spelling and bad grammar. Who 
most emails from major companies are proofread and checked. If an email claiming to come from someone in a position of power comes through with lots of spelling and grammatical errors, be suspicious. Scammers don't necessarily have a good education. Or maybe come from a different country. So don't have the language skills you would expect. Number 8. company is contacting you out of the blue. If a company you've never dealt with before is contacting you out of the blue, whether online, on the phone, or face to face, and is asking you for money, be very wary. To ensure they are who they say they are, go to their official website, call the number from there, and ask if it is legitimate. Number 9 Your bank is asking you for your PIN number and personal information. A bank will never ask you for your PIN number or any online banking passwords either. If at any point you become suspicious of someone saying they are from your bank, Hang up and call them back from a number that the official bank website has written on its contact us page. Number 10. 